Hey, what's going on, everybody? We are here for the Integrated Entrepreneur. We're going to go over something that other podcasts, other, other shows don't really talk about. And I think it's one of the most challenging clients that we want is parenting when you're an entrepreneur. All right. And uh, Keith and I both dealt with a couple of things that we were just rapping on earlier and decided we're just going to make the show about that because it's that important to us. And a lot of everything, bro. Dad, dad life 101s kicked in like we were talking about. And I think it's a good, it's just something dude, that entrepreneurs have to deal with and, and the effects of this stress in the environment at home and how it parlays into your work day, right? How it parlays into you running a team and, and being the most effective at work. But dude, a bunch, I got two daughters, as you know, but for, for, you know, the listeners, um, you know, 13 and 11, I just been, been dealing with some, some crazy information that has come out. And now my 13 year old is homeschooled full time. Uh, and my 11 year old is working her way that way. Right. And, uh, dude, the last two weeks have just been hell, right. Yeah. Just the shit you hear and the stories that you hear and like, man, what, what the fuck, how did, how did this take so long to get to our, to our channel, right. Our info channel. But I think there's some good learning to it, right? That's why I said you hadn't hit the record button because it's not something that's really talked about a bunch in the entrepreneurial world, but it's, it's one of those things that is, uh, you know, as a leader, not only does it happen to me, but is this happening to our employees, right? And, and understanding what they're going through when they show up to have a shitty day at work and not just being the, the, the one who cracks the whip and is bitching about, you know, processes and things getting accomplished, but like, taking a step back and being a fucking human yeah. and really looking through the lens of like what could be going on in your world and, and how could we help you? Right. So dude, it's, it's, it's been a crazy fucking ride for two weeks. I can tell you that. hundred percent. For sure. Guys, one of the things Keith just alluded to, listen, I, we all want to build our business to eight, nine, 10 figures, but the reality is your business is going to come and go at some point. Family's there forever. Right. We can talk about business all we want, but the most important thing you're ever going to do is bring those humans along and make them good Americans and good people. And if you miss on that, I'm, I promise you, the consolation prize that you have in this 10-figure business isn't worth half as, as much as you think it is. So, Keith, why don't we drill into this? Because this is huge. Let's do it. If, yeah. So... <laughs> I don't know, man. You t- you, so you you got a team, yeah. right? Have you ever taken a step back to look at it as like what, what's going on at home when they show up a certain way? Or do you, do you look over that because it's not something that we're constantly thinking about? Great, great question. I only ask if I think something is off. I never ask, hey, how's it all going? And expect an in-depth uh, answer. Right. If I know something's off with that individual, I try to find out what it is, whether it's work, by you know, at home, whatever. And I will say this, most of my team, either a few of them have one or two kids, or most of them are in the process of creating families. There's not a lot of uh, older people that have established families like you and I. I'm still going through it myself, (laughs) you know, and I got another one on the way, and it is, I'm still learning and messing up every day That's we should have the birds and the bees talk with you bro yeah i appreciate that <laughs> i think i got that poem somewhere a little late a little late <laughs> no, I mean, dude listen, i let's let's go. go ahead you're good well we were rapping because my, one of my sons had an incident this weekend and my when it comes to my children i am irrational and I am irrational in a bad, protective way. And so, long story short, my youngest was getting picked on. My oldest got in trouble for not doing the right thing and uh, whooping some ass. And then I, against my whole, everything I wanted to do, I listened to my wife, thank God, and she handled it. And she didn't handle it the way I was going to handle it. And we're friends with the other parents, so I'm glad I didn't do what I normally would have done in that situation. Now, right. had we not known the parents, it probably would have been a different story. However, we didn't. And some of the challenges you guys got to realize, one, you need the ability to have your 
kids speak to you. One of the things I just implemented with my kids is we have a code word. When they're in trouble, they can be with their friends, they can be out somewhere, it doesn't matter. If they say, don't forget the pickles, okay, I'm coming there and picking their asses up. 95 miles an hour. Yep, 95 (laughs) miles an hour, uh, locked and loaded, okay, because you never know what situations there where you're getting that. That is a code word that we implement. Um, These are things that there are challenges today that our parents didn't have to deal with. There are challenges today that we didn't have to deal with, right? We did not have social media in junior high or high school. All right. So I could only imagine the amount of bullying that goes on there because I know how much bullying go- went on when we were in school. But back when we were in school, you could beat somebody's ass. And then the next day you guys were cool. And guess what? The bullying stopped. Well, it's hard to do that over social media. Yeah. So Yeah, that's one huge thing, right? Like to your point, it was either, hey, we're going to fight after school mm-hmm. or the bullying was over until the next day. Right. And the shit talking was over now. To your point, social media, this fucking shit goes to every other school in a matter of 20 seconds. You can't get away from it, period. So that was the thing that there's been some stories about my oldest daughter. Uh, I won't get into too much detail, but, you know, my my lipstick list got a little longer when she came and actually told us about this, right? I went into fucking kill mode. And um, it's been happening for two years, right? And so question one is like, why the hell didn't she approach us earlier, right? Question two is how do we start to protect her from it? Because it's still social media. So even pulling her out of homeschool, social media is an issue, right? So that had to go, right? And, you know, as a, as a 13 year old, that's where all these kids communicate. They don't text and call and all, they, they go on a social media platform and then FaceTime each other through like Snapchat and shit, right? So it's, to her, she was like, why am I getting punished for them picking on me? And I had to like tell her, like, this is this is how information travels, right? You want you don't want this to bug you, then you have to get off of that platform for now. And also, if we just keep pulling you from these issues, like you're gonna have to deal with this shit. Adversity is gonna be there. There's gonna be people who are always trying to knock you off your pedestal. I don't give a shit if you're 13 or 50. Yeah. Right? So this is at a, at a great time where I was dealing with some shit through a group, right, uh, of shit talking over the last couple of weeks. And I had to show her these messages. I'm like, hey, I'm 42 years old this year. People are still talking shit. Like, you just got to know that, that they're jealous. They're trying to stop you. They're trying to get under your skin, et cetera. But at that age, they don't see that. They don't get it yet. They're starting to comprehend it a little bit. But reality is they don't really fully grasp they just think they are. I'm in trouble. That shit hurt in my late twenties, bro. I didn't really yeah. go over the shit talking until like thirty, and I knew I could buy those people ten times over. Right. Uh, I mean, and you still want to whip their ass. And yes, I still want. <laughs> I still want to throat punch them, but I don't focus on it. But that's something that takes tons of experience. You can't expect anyone, any kid, done to deal with that. And yeah. Like, we never had to have our parents say, "Oh, cut, get off social media." No. They said something. No, my dad would drop me off at their house. Yeah. Get in the truck, boy. We're going to see him. All right. Well, what if I get beat up? Well, I'll beat their dad's ass. Okay. Whatever. Right. But, you know, I think where this ties into, this is a great opportunity for us entrepreneurs to really take a step back and understand that this shit is happening in our employees' lives. Yeah. And it's, it's way more routine than we're thinking. Right. Like I, we didn't record last week because I was in the thick of it. I had no idea you were going through the same shit, you know, or, or a couple of days after had the same type shit. Right. But the, you know, the more that I've been vocal about this issue with in my community, the shit, ha- I mean, fucking nine out of 10 people are dealing with something similar. So if that's happening at that, you know, high of a routine, yeah, it's gotta be affecting our, our, you know, employees and customers and clients and all the, you know, everyone. So what are we doing as entrepreneurs to take a step back and, and, and check that, right? And check in, you know, I try to do a good job with my friends and like, hey, and I send random texts all the time. Like, how's your mental health? Like, I don't even say hi. Just, hey, doing a buddy check. How, how are you doing upstairs, right? 
How often are we doing that to our employees? Instead of always the expectation, well, why did you fuck that up? Right? How'd you screw that up? What are we doing in the meantime to kind of understand if it's they did, didn't pay attention or if their mind is fucking way off in left field, right? Yeah. Dealing with something else. I don't do it. And this is a good this is a good reminder of like, hey, this is something to implement. Yeah. Yeah. I also think you gotta do a better job. I mean, you gotta check in with your team, but you also have to check in a lot with your kids and, and try to look at any changes. Like the only reason why I knew about this is because it just happened and my son told me about it. Right. Had he not told me, I would have had no idea. Right? My oldest probably doesn't even tell me about things. And you have to think about all the types of technology, all the sites, everything that these kids have access to. On one hand, it's so much more information and so much more power than, and they can get ahead so far because they have access. But what about the evils that are there, right? I can't tell you how many times I see people, and I've been guilty of it, just hand the kids an iPad when you're a little too jammed up or too busy. Well, what are they searching? There's obviously controls on there, but what happens if they bypass the controls? Man, that shit's so easy to bypass these days. Mm-hmm. That's my point. Big time. That's my yeah. point, guys. So think about all these things and all these ways that bad shit could be getting into your kid's head, right? And if you're not giving them the tools to combat that, then we're failing. We're failing as, as a group of uh, entrepreneurs is, is we're failing as parents and, and that's somewhere where we just can't afford to fail and that doesn't mean that you did something wrong or you're a bad parent it literally means that there are other things that we have to think about to make sure our kids are put in the best position possible well dude this to to that point like this shit's been happening with my daughter for fucking two years yeah. right and so we, we, we had a friend do some investigation. <clears throat> and she asked us a question on when my daughter quit ordering her own food at a restaurant. Right? Like out of the blue, she just refused to talk to the waitress or waiter, whoever. And we, you know, we didn't think anything of it. We we're just like, oh, she's she's being funny or whatever the case is. But that's that's when the shit started happening. She's like, that's when she started to go internal and kind of close and, and put her guard up. And something that little could be the warning sign of some major shit happening that as parents, we're just like, she'll take a cheeseburger and a fucking Coke, I guess. Yeah. Because she won't talk to you, right? Yeah. But dude, like the fact that something that little was a warning sign, I mean, it is nuts, first and foremost, that we didn't really think of it as anything. But it's something that little that could be the keys to the Bentley on much bigger shit that you find out. Cause again, there's, we all say it, there's no fucking book, but think about the same thing in, in your business world, right? What warning signs are we missing with our employees who are stealing from us, who are doing shit, who are whatever the case is, because we're not paying attention to the, to the micro. Right. True. So, that, you know, I think the learning lesson here is like, we we got to do better with our employees. We got to do better with those that we lead. We got to we got to do better with how we lead our families as men and women, right? Especially entrepreneur A type. Uh, we're we're used to the authoritative side, but how often are we ignoring ignoring the small shit that that is truly like the the silent cry for help, if you will? Yeah, I don't I fucking know. Caught, I would have never caught that to you. Hell no. No, no one does. Everyone's like, oh, well, that's crazy. Yeah. You know? Um, but say all that to say this, like, to fix it is easy. Right? And and I and obviously I don't want to piss a bunch of people off. You know, it's it's not easy for everyone. We caught it early enough and it wasn't severe enough. You know, obviously there's some people with some major cases out there, but you know, I think just as what I took away from, from this experience was like, sometimes you just kind of step back and, and, and do the whole mental health day. Mm-hmm. Right. And we even have that. We thought enough, which was like, if the kids were just weren't feeling school and they were just emotionally out of it, like we were just going to keep them home. Yeah. 
you know, so we, we've, we've had that happen, but even that's not enough. Right. So moral of the story guys is to kind of check in, step back, you know, think about certain activities, certain, certain actions that are happening in your ecosystem. And if you suspect anything, don't, don't hesitate to pull a check, yeah. you know, pull them off to the side and, and, and do a mental health check and try to figure out what's going on. Cause that shit, uh, that shit would have went any further. I'd be in prison. Yeah. Uh, For sure. I am, I am literally, the, probably the first thing I said to you was, I am shocked that you are here. <laughs> and I said, you did yeah. a really good job. Because I almost ended up in jail this weekend. And uh, I'm still shocked that you're not in jail. It was close. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I have it was zero, close. <laughs> I have zero doubt. And guys, when you're doing this with your team, with employees, with your kids, Keith said one thing I need to highlight, off to the side, okay? People, it's it's hard enough to get information out of people. So if you start noticing trends with anybody, you know, sit down and then discuss everything with them. And I will tell you this, here, here's a little hint. People cannot provide consistently good enough to cover. There are people that can do a one-off cover, all right? The reason I know this, guys, is because I grew up and growing up, one of my best friend's dad, who, who was also a neighbor, was a detective. And that motherfucker, rest his soul, he's passed. But if I went to that house and he just did something, he'd figure it out. <clears throat> he asked the right questions. And so I got very, very, I got very good at understanding human behavior and how people lie and when they lie. Uh, all from him. Literally through osmosis. It was yeah, because you had to learn to not get your ass whipped is what happened. That's, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> I had to make sure that I got out of there and I didn't have any fucking bruises on me. Okay? <laughs> and so what will happen is if when you're pulling them to the side, if they're not forthcoming with that information, right, or what they told you seems off, tell a story, okay, and then ask other questions. And then... After you ask other questions and the conversation isn't forced, it's more free flowing, go back to those questions. Mm -hmm. Now what you're trying to do is you're trying to look for any mannerisms, any giveaways. Are they looking away? Are they fidgeting? Do they seem nervous? Or are they more relaxed? If they're still relaxed and spitting out the exact same answers, they're either really fucking good or they're telling you the truth. The reality is at most at that point, most of those people will either fidget, squirm, or look away, or look nervous, or they will actually come out with what's really going on. Yeah. Okay? And you can repeat that process <clears throat> as many times as needed if you feel something's really there. And you can also repeat that process over several days. And here's what eventually happens. That person's either going to get tired of lying, or they're going to catch up, or you're going to catch them up, and the shit's not going to match. Or it's going to be so quit. uncomfortable and so awkward. It's going to get forced to come out. Okay. Yep. And this happened to me a lot when we were kids to the point where we knew not even to lie to him because he was going to find out. And when he found out, depending on how long we carried on that lie, was probably going <laughs> to uh, drive how bad of a beating we got. 100%. Yeah. Those controlled questions are the good ones, right? Yeah. Ones that you know they can't lie about, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll never forget when I was in law enforcement going through like the lie detector test. I never understood why. Is your name Keith Gauze? Yes. Yep. Dummy. Yes, it is. Right? Have you ever fucked a sheep? No. Right? Like, they'll ask you that shit because they'll know. But, dude, the slightest little hesitation or the pause or the breath or any of that's the indication. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, whether you're trying to pull out something bad or whether you're just trying to have a conversation with your spouse or kids and try to extract information on what's bothering them, those are, those are tactical ways to control the conversation and get the information you're looking for without making it seem like you're just interrogating them, right? Because what I learned on my, with my daughter was I can't ask her about it. I just have to let her know I'm there and that when she's ready to talk about it, we can talk. If I continue to ask, that she just gets closer and closer and closer and just doesn't want to talk about anything, and then she turns into a mute. Right. But if I don't, if I act as if I don't care 
and I drop subtle little conversation hints, then she'll start to open up. And then when she's opened up, like, then, then I go in for the kill. Tell me what happened, right? Where's he at? Where does he live? All that shit. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, this is, this shit happens in every household, man. And I think it's just happening so, so often and that people deal with it, that it's become quote unquote regular. And, you know, what I've learned by having a super open conversation with all of our employees was that they're, they're willing to talk about it. They actually want to talk about it. They just need to feel safe, mm -hmm. right, before they'll open up. But when they open up, then they won't shut up about it because they need to get it out, right? Mm -hmm. And damage control is very simple to do if you're proactive in these conversations. But you have to be continuous with it. It can't just be when you suspect they're feeling a certain way or they you think something's happening. I once or twice a week. Hey man, how are you doing? How, how's your headspace? Like, fuck work, fuck home, whatever. How are you? And if you're good, great. And if you're not good, then let's go to lunch. There you, go. you know what I'm saying? And it and it works, man. And and talk about culture building and just the difference on how people are act around. You know, it's not a level ten meeting. You don't do this shit in your EOS meeting, guys. Okay, this is a this is a private one off. Yeah, and it will pay you dividends in culture. And it will pay you dividends in continuously recruiting your same fucking employees that aren't going to leave you. Yeah. Right. And so it's not just communication, but it's it's keeping you from having to continue to hire people because your ass just don't know how to have a real relationship. Yeah. So if your employees know you care, they'll run through a wall for you. Yeah. If they don't think you care. You only care about the money or you only care at certain points. Those guys are going to leave. Right. And one of the things that Keith was trying to allude to here, which you know is so big, most most companies have a hiring Ferris wheel. Okay, here's what I mean by that: you hire the Ferris wheel, you wait online, you get online, you go up, 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 and then by the time it gets to the bottom, you get off. Well, if you have a hiring Ferris wheel, okay, in your company, you can never outgrow or you can never grow unless your hiring outpaces the pace of the Ferris wheel, okay? And, and that Ferris wheel can speed up at any point. What keeps the Ferris wheels from moving at all, okay, is culture and core values. So the stronger your culture, the better the leader you are, the slower that Ferris wheel will spin, which means your employees will stay there longer. They will be more driven. They will be the guys that you want to go to war with every single day. And it'll be easier to grow because you're not always looking to replace somebody in, in addition to bringing on someone new. Okay? All you have to do is bring on someone new. And until you guys can get that fear of Ferris wheel to stop, okay, or at least slow down, it's going to be very hard to truly grow and scale your company without some level of techno technological advantage that you just don't need to even cap it. Guess what? I don't think my company will ever reach a point, even if we went full AI, where we're not going to have enough of the staff because I, the people are immensely valuable. Yep. Right, guys? So that, that's huge. And guess what? These principles still, it's the same shit at home, guys. If you have a, a core values for your family, okay, no one talks about that. I don't understand why. My family, we, we have core values. Our culture is we do the right thing. We help people. We put in the work. Well, guess what? My kids do that. Even a little six-year-old. Okay? Mm -hmm. Those things matter. And that's how you set a standard and that's how you consistently make people around you better. Alright? So the faster you guys adapt that in all areas, in all phases of your life, work, family, friends, better your life is going to be, guys. It's that simple. Got to keep it consistent. Exactly. All right, guys. Well, listen, do us a favor. Really appreciate you guys. Share this with someone who needs to hear. Just one person. Just share with one other person because I guarantee you we covered things that no other show is going to cover. All right? This is not easy for us to come on here every week and, and open up about these personal things, about our fuck-ups. All we ask you to do is just share with someone who needs to hear it.
All right. Thanks, guys. And we'll catch you on the next one. See you.